Okay, so those of you who aren't familiar with CVXs or the inside of CVXs, uh, this is the alternator. Now, there's been a lot of debate about these alternators on the CVX because actually what they've got on them is a clutch. And uh, in fact, yeah, I'm looking at this one here. This one has been welded. Um, and I've seen this before. Uh, there's a lot of commentary around, oh, you shouldn't weld them. Well, the, the truth of the matter is, if you look at the, uh, the inline fours, the alternator sits on the, side, on the back of the crankshaft. Um, and, uh, and there's no clutch on it. So the question is, why did Honda put a clutch on the alternator on the CVX? It rotates on a one-to-one -one basis, um, the same as uh, the crank. So I don't understand why they put a clutch on it. They're, they must have had their reasons. But I know someone who's actually actually asked the engineers at Honda back in the day why they put this clutch on there. And they never got an answer. So um, answers on a postcard if you know the reasons why. But if you've got problems with this, you weld it up. Um, there's, uh, there's the purists out there that won't do this. Fine, that's their, their opinion. But actually, if you want to avoid problems, when these two things start slipping, you get iron filings or steel filings in, 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 the, in the sump. Uh, that goes straight into the oil pump, you know, damages the oil pump, reduces the oil pressure, and suddenly you work, you work towards a failed engine. So from my point of view, unless anyone's had a serious engine failure due to welding a crank, uh, welding up the clutch, why, why, why are you opposed to it? Um, again, answer on a postcard. So I really appreciate the comments from the Super Sport Shed if uh, others have opinions on that. I'm just giving you my opinion. So uh, this is a free and open society for people to comment on. That's what this, uh, this site's about. So we can see here, that's the alternator. I was gonna show you the clutch, but it's welded. I've just literally pulled it off. So uh, look forward to your comments on that. So that's the clutch off. I'm gonna move on, let the time lapse do its job and come back to you shortly. Okay, so I've removed the alternator now. I've just uh, removed the starter motor, two bolts. Um, and now I'm going to remove the clutch. So I've removed all the bolts. I'm just about to pull this off and have a look inside. Actually, uh, more RTV. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, so now I'm going to basically work towards uh, pulling this clutch. Don't forget the push rod. Put it in there so it doesn't get lost. So I'm going to work towards now pulling this clutch apart and, uh, and we'll see how we get on from there. So let's just put that in there for a moment. So I'll just get my uh, 10 mil nut spinner and we'll start pulling the clutch off. So six bolts holding on the spring tensioner. Okay, so I've been a little while. Um, uh, this nut for the clutch uh, basically had been put on back on with a chisel and it had been put on hard to the extent that it actually distorted the thread as he's banging it back on. Um, that caused me two problems. One is I couldn't get the, uh, um, the spanner on there to, uh, to undo it. That's the first problem. And secondly, when I tried to do it with a chisel, it was tight. So in the end, I had to get a Dremel and actually split the nut to, uh, to give me some latitude to get it off. Uh, so that's been a bit of a mission. But anyway, that aside, I'm going to get myself another nut from somewhere. But uh, I'm sure I've probably got one somewhere. I'm going to have to dig that in. So the clutch now is ready to pull off. So what I'm going to do is just turn this around a little bit. Um, and uh, share this with you quickly. So here's the clutch. So literally it just is a case now of, there's a washer there. Now it's worthwhile noting actually up here, there are a couple of washers. So that's the, the washer behind the, the castle nut. And then we'll pull this off. And uh, so we've got that. Now behind the, the clutch basket, there should be, well there used to be, um, Ah, no, it's on the B model. I think it's on the B model. There's another thrust washer in there. So when you move from a, a Z to a, a B model, there's another thrust washer. I'll double check that in, but I'm pretty certain that's the, the case, because when I fitted a B model clutch onto my Z model, 
uh, I had to find the other thrust washer in there. I might be mistaken on that, but we can check. So that's the clutch off. So behind here now, we've got uh, the sprocket now. This drives the, um, this sprocket here drives the oil pump, and that's the chain to the oil pump there. So basically, we're gonna stop there, um, and uh, I'm now gonna start moving to the next stage of pulling this motor apart. See you soon. Okay, so welcome back. Um, since we caught up just a, a few minutes ago, I removed the, the, uh, the main gear off of the uh, primary shaft. I removed the, uh, the oil pump sprockets. They're off now. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, I've, I'm gonna rem remove the sump. Now I've taken the liberty of removing the bolts off of the sump. So you're gonna see firsthand what mess is under here. in there so yes oh my goodness RTV all over the place but there we go you can see there um, it's actually not that bad but it's pretty messy not as bad as I was expecting but there are some bits of metal here <laughs> which is not a surprise um, considering it's thrown a crank now just a point to note that uh, I've turned this motor over and inevitably there is some residual oil in the sun. Um, that goes on the workshop, so I always have, uh, always have a bucket of sawdust ready. So that's what I use. Okay, we're on the home straight now. Um, the last uh, half an hour has been a messy one. You inevitably get oil in the, left in the crankcase, even after draining it in the sun. Um, really what I should have done was remove the sun first when it was on the bike. Uh, but hey ho, you know, with everything that's going on at the moment, uh, I forgot to do that. But anyway, if I'd done that, I wouldn't have ended up in the mess that I had. So just a tip, if you're going to pull these engines apart, just take the sump off first and then you don't get uh, oil pouring out and you tip the engine upside down. But you know, the sawdust has done its work. So now anyway, coming back to the point in hand, we're on the home straight now. So I'm going to start now removing um, the crankcase bolts and uh, pull this motor apart and split it and see what mess is awaiting us inside. doesn't actually go anywhere <laughs> so we've actually only got one bolt holding the uh, the crankcase again that will cause immense stress on uh, on that particular journal there because the, the loads being taken on these other two so this one here when this engine's firing is going to be taking a lot of uh, a lot of impact so that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's the music I said to you it doesn't get any worse well it just has so <laughs> You've got to laugh, because otherwise you bloody well cry. I'm going to go around. That can go in the bin. Now I'm hoping, I'm going to go around, just check all the bolts are out. Make sure there's nothing left in. So that's out. So I think we're there now. Probably find that uh, I've missed something, but I'm not too bothered if I have because I'm not going to be knocking it hard. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not going to be knocking it hard. So uh, hopefully it will just uh, it will come apart as it is. But we'll soon find out. Um, where's my mallet? So look, I'm going to give it a light tap now. I probably forgot something because I'm talking to you both. But uh, that doesn't seem to be coming apart, but it could be the RTV. It's going to be what's happening. It's quite possible I've missed something. So that's out. 
Okay, so I went rang. There were no bolts left in. It just was the RTV. Now I've just tapped it. What I actually did this time was just take the weight on this back corner here and actually hit it that way. Um, because actually that, uh, that broke the RTV. So just a future reference. I mean, normally I just tap it like that and it comes off. So what I had to do is take the weight on this corner here and work it there, and that's broken the RTV sill. So now we can take, we can take the bottom half off. So we put that on the floor there. And we'll see what we've got inside. Um, So, where are we? Yes, and that looks rather messy there. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> that is a shocker. I suspect that what's happened there is that nut's come loose on that uh, shell and that's given way on that side. My goodness, what a mess. So here we go, we're inside now. Um, the engine's apart. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this crank is not wonderful. I've seen worse. But uh, it's, uh, it's a shame, really. Um, probably a bit of polish in that, sh that crank's okay, but look at the mess there. Oh, my goodness. Sad. I suspect that, uh, that, shirt, that, um, that bottom half of the conrod has come loose. And, and give them way, but uh, a bit of future investigation will will show us all. So that's about it really for now. I've got to um, draw a line under it there because I've got other stuff that I need to be doing. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just pull pull these parts out. I don't think really there's a lot more to show. Um, taking out the primary shaft here is a uh, uh, is, a, is a job that needs to be undertaken. So we've got several things here. Here's the starter clutch on a CBX. It's actually attached to the primary shaft. Um, yeah, there's not really a lot much more to show, uh, to be quite honest with you. So there we go. So you can see on the primary shaft, the alternator is driven on the, on the back side of the primary shaft. Um, Primary chain tensioner. That's the uh, that's the t the tensioner there runs off the oil pressure. Um, yeah, I mean it's pretty much the same as any bike motor if you've ever taken one apart. But that's the inside of a CBX um, when it's been split. So there we go. That's probably enough for today. I'm I'm just going to take these parts out now, strip it down. But I, I just really wanted to reveal to you the the devastation that's been caused on this bike, which is uh, which is a sad sad event. So here we go, here's the uh, final part of this uh, engine dissection. I have to say I'm, uh, I'm truly shocked about what I see. Um, today I'm just going to go through why I believe this engine failed. And I think it's fairly straightforward, but I really want to kick off with... I said at the outset I think the, uh, the failure of this bike might be down to RTV cancer. Well I think you can see there the state of this particular engine. Um, it is just shocking. I don't think I've ever seen anything so bad in my whole uh, engineering career, to be quite honest with you. The whole thing is smothered with RTV from top to bottom. really just want to focus in on this piston here and the, the damage that's been caused. You can see there it's cracked the liner. Um, yeah, you can see there it's cracked the liner there and it's a bit nasty. But we come round and we then start looking at uh, the internals and, and really the signs of why this engine failed. And the first thing to look at is actually the rest of the journals. Okay, Now I've looked at, at uh, a lot of these bearings in here. They're not down to the copper, they are worn, but, uh, 
but you know they are in fairly good condition which indicates when this this motor failed that actually it had good oil pressure or reasonable oil pressure but it was enough it wasn't enough to cause this engine to fail so i think the the signs as you can see they're fairly straightforward until we get to this bearing here even along the end here we can see that these uh these bearings you know i run my finger over there and it's it's just normal normal wear but then we look at this one here this is this is absolutely shocking um we can see that th there's been so much heat in this bearing that this isn't down to uh lack of lubricant this is down to no lubricant and then uh, then we look in the hole there and we can see it's completely and utterly dry so my reckoning on this engine my pathology report is that this is downright um, rtv cancer oh i meant to show you and actually if we look down in there i think that says it all what's happened is that some rtv has broken away in the oil gallery somewhere where it's been smothered made its way through the oil way and actually got into the crank and, and completely blocked that uh, oil, oil way there to that bearing the heat was such that it actually welded itself um, welded itself to a point that actually it was an absolutely catastrophic failure I've seen thrown rods in my time but this is absolutely catastrophic so I'll send my report to you guys as the coroners and you can decide the sentence of the previous owner of this bike because uh, it's a shocker but there we go. I hope you've, in, you've enjoyed this. Um, I look forward to catching up with you guys on the next part of this, uh, this uh, breakdown of this bike um, and its rebuild to uh, an everyday bike for the summer. Catch up soon and take care.